Welcome to this week's program of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. Today our program is on autism and work. Our guests include Jacob Wang, Nona Miloslavsky, and Best Buddies correspondent John Hammond. My co-host, Will Burnick, is wearing a very interesting shirt today. Yes. This is my warrior shirt. I'm, I'm wearing this to support to show my support for the Warriors. Excellent. Our first guest uh, is Jacob Wang. Mm -hmm. We'll take it from here, please. Thank you, Keith. Jacob, mm -hmm. first of all, welcome to the show. First question, when did you first realize you were on the autism spectrum? I was tested at 20, then again retested when I was uh, 31. <laughs> And when I was tested at 20, it's because my mom noticed some traits that I had that was similar to one of her brothers. <laughs> so, and I was also going into college, so she had me tested. And it came out to be a uh, pervasive developmental disorder. Then it was changed to Asperger's syndrome in 2001 when I was uh, 31. <laughs> Um, tell us about your school and background. I was uh, born in Taiwan in 1969. When I was eight and a half, almost nine years old, my dad got transferred to San Francisco by the uh, national airline there, China Airlines. And so we immigrated here in 1978. And then I immediately enrolled at Robert Louis Stevenson School. Then I went to private schools for middle and high school, West Port of Lutheran and St. Ignatius. Then I went down to uh, San Jose State for college. And sometime when I was Growing up, my mom took a job at UCSF and found a program there, but she didn't go in to ask questions. Jacob, I understand you have a college degree. Can you tell about your college experience? Yeah, I, I studied psychology, but it was really difficult. Some of the classes were more theoretical than I bargained for. <laughs> What classes did you particularly enjoy? Um, classes about um, development. And since you also have to take GE classes, I enjoyed other social science classes. Excellent. What did you find to be the biggest challenge? Was it that some of the classes were theoretical, or were there other uh, challenges uh, for you to complete your degree? That was it. And although I was in the disabled students uh, club there, I didn't get along well with uh, the people I lived with and was also very hesitant to ask for help at the time. This was in my early 20s, by the way. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> if it's not too personal, <laughs> uh, Jacob, why is, was it hard for you to ask for help? Um, that's what I've never been able to figure out. Maybe I'm just an introvert. Mm. Okay. Good. Okay, now well. All right. Oh, uh... I understand you have a steady job with the state of California. Please tell us about it. Yeah, I am a office assistant. In re reality, I'm a, I've been a scanning clerk for the state architect's office for the last seven years. I scan uh, architectural drawings and specification reports. And I'm supposed to turn that 
They recently changed the policy so that we're now supposed to turn that into a PDF file. <laughs> and they'll upload it into our internal database. Can you tell us how you uh, got your job? I know uh, employment uh, for our community is a major issue, and so anything you could tell us about how you were able to uh, get your very stable and successful job would be a great help. Um, vocational rehab, uh, recommended me to a, a program called Rehab Services of Northern California, and then yeah, they found the job <laughs> for me. Excellent. What, what do you like about your job, and w what do you find as big challenges? Uh, I like that there's a routine. A big challenge? Short term, it's just the, now that I work full time, I have to get up earlier because the job is in downtown Oakland. And also, um, that recently we've had new procedures, so it was kind of difficult getting used to. Yeah. I can understand that. Tell us about your involvement with Ascend. What are some of your plans for the future? Right now I'm the um, recording secretary on the board meetings. I record minutes. And then I have to type them up and send a copy to everybody on the board. Okay. So I understand you've been involved with Ascend for a very long time. Can you mm -hmm. tell us more about how you heard about the organization and, and joined it and became as active as you are now? Uh, in 2001, I, it was on a list of resources that appeared in a Chronicle article in 2001 about autism. <laughs> what made you decide that it was uh, something you wanted to do based on the article? I had recently just found out that I tested somewhere on the spectrum, so I wanted to meet more people like and find out ways to overcome it. I'll, I'll put that in quotes. <laughs> Well, I think you've been doing a very fine job. I mean, you, you're, you're a shining example uh, to us all. You've got a, a college degree from San Jose State. You've achieved stable and lasting employment, and you're giving back to uh, our community. You, know, you could hardly ask for more. And I know we'll be hearing a lot more from you in the future, Jacob. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for your time. Our next guest is uh, Nona Miloslavsky, a member of our community who's going to be telling us about her experiences in uh, volunteering. Will? Nona, welcome to the show, Nona. Can you tell us about your background? Um, I was born here. My parents were born in Ukraine, but they came here a long time ago. Um, I went to school here in Millbrae called Mills High School. Um, I was a librarian assistant and um, I had a lot of fun doing that and, um, and visiting my high school and it's fun. <laughs> um, I live here in San Francisco. I moved. Um, June 6th of last year. Um, can you, can you tell us about your job? I volunteer at Laheim Jewish Family Children's Services. Um, we play bingo. Um, I always win, but the senior citizens win also. Um, I work with Russian senior citizens. Um, I play bingo with them. I pass out the cards. I shred. I sometimes help with the kitchen, um, doing soup cups for preparing for lunch and 
Um, all my Russian coworkers are really nice. They like me there, and um, yeah. So tell us about how you started your volunteer work. What made you decide to do, do that, and how did you pick what kind of volunteer work to do? Um, my supervisor from Schuppenhaus um, called um, called uh, um, my Rus my Russian boss and asked me to volunteer there. Interesting. I'm not familiar with Schuppenhaus. Could you tell us about that for our, our it's listeners? A, independent living facility and um, we go on bus routing and doing a lot of different stuff together and um, like we do party, like dance parties and stuff like that. Interesting. Who is it uh, in Independent living for what uh, kind of people uh, live there? People with disabilities. Okay. Interesting. Is it um, uh, all types of disabilities? Yes. People. Okay. Interesting. Oh, can you tell us about about your goals for the future? Um, Department of Rehab is soon gonna give me an interview um, for an office assistant job. I wanted to be an office assistant because I thought I was I was doing really well in college. I went to college in upstate New York, which is called Maple Brook, and um, they they taught me how to um, sort out mail and and do slips for the teachers and like send the mail and everything and I did copies for my dad's work a while ago when I was little and um, I paper clip receipts now and help the assistants out at work okay so I want to be an office assistant very good so I understand that you, you went to college back east. Can yes. you tell us a little bit more about your college experience? Um, it was really hard to stay, to, to um, be away um, from your parents. That was the hardest part. Like, in the first dorm is Wilson, was Wilson, Wilson Hall. Um, we had a roommate, like, we had to be with the roommate and, like, do all the chores and, like, sleep in different beds but in the same room. And then, um, Sky Hall is independent. We had to do our own thing and then, um... Um, back east, I worked at daycares um, with little kids, and um, and I had to put the toys away and everything, and I um, had lunch with them and stuff, and it was really nice. They miss me now because I already graduated, but I call every once in a while to see how they're doing, and yeah. Really good. So it sounds like you, you like working both with uh, children and with seniors. Do you have a preference which you like to work with more? Uh, seniors, because <laughs> kids are like nuts. <laughs> 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 they like, okay. Play with me, play with me. Like they, they want to play with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really good. So, um, are you, it sounds like uh, you do a lot of volunteer work. Um, yes. Are you active in the Russian community in other ways? Um, in the Ukrainian community here? Um, not yet. I could, but I don't know when. <laughs> um, just Laheim, that's it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it sounds like you are a very, very uh, busy and active person. And yes. again, uh, an example to us all, uh, you went to college and you're actively out there in the community yes, uh, volunteering am. and uh, working toward uh, getting uh, actual employment. Yes. Um, so Farm Department of Rehab, I'm hoping they will call back my mom because they, they did not yet, and I'm still waiting, so yeah. Well, from mm -hmm. I've heard, you got to keep after them. Yes. Yes, that's one of the things we learn. Yeah, I know, I'm keeping after them, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. Well... Um, keep after them, and uh, we'll go ahead there. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you very much for your time. I know we'll be hearing a lot more from thank you, too. Thank you. Nice Nona. to meet everybody. <laughs> Likewise. Well. Um, thanks for being here today, Nono. We, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. And now a new segment to our program. We're going to be having a biweekly uh, portion where we will be speaking with our correspondent from Best Buddies to talk about current and upcoming activities. Our correspondent, John Hammond, will now be addressed by Will. Thank you, Keith. John, can you tell us about some of the recent activities of Best Buddies? So, Monday we went to a Warrior practice facility with Best Buddies, and we did a, warrior, a Warriors clinic. So then Wednesday, last, this past Wednesday, me and Will went, went to the Warriors game with Best Buddies. And we got to go watch the, the shoot-around before the game. And then last Thursday Will, was Will's speech. Will, do you want to talk about your speech? I sure do. Last, last, one, last Wednesday, I gave a, gave a speech about the R word in front, in front of the USF student body. I... Some of the audience were also our clients and Best Buddies members too. They they were all there to watch to watch my speech. I gave it with fellow our clients Gabby and Clifford. Oh, and John's own John's friend and fellow Best Buddies member Sarah Hoffman. For those of us uh, who didn't hear your speech, Will, could you tell us a little bit more about what you said? You know, relating to the R word and so on. I talked about how it affects affects uh, s students, how it's used in schools and everyday life, and how there's a camp there is a campaign to stop the R word, to to get rid of it. About the about the action that school that my school that my that some schools have taken, including my own former school, Cal State East Bay. I think that's really an important thing that you and Best Buddies are doing, Will. For those of us who don't know, what should we now say? What is the best Can way of referring it? to people uh, in that state instead of using the R word, which we know we should no longer do? Um, so what we can no longer do is you can go to nrword.org and sign the pledge. And it's, t it's a term physically dis disabled now. Is what it is, and um, and it was passed by the California state government last year, because I had to go to city hall. I went to um, Sacramento about it, and the health committee passed it on the governor Jerry Brown, and he signed it in the state California state law, and now we can use the R word in California. It's very good to hear. Can you tell us about uh, upcoming Best Buddies activities, John? Yes, I can. We had the friendship walk on April the eighteenth which is a 5K walk in Chrissy Field, which Will's going to do. Very good to hear that, Will. I'll even be, be interviewing some of the participants of the Friendship Walk. I, I'll, be, I'll be there on set, film, on camera. That's really good. Will that be for this program, Will, or will that be for Best Buddies or for both? It'll be for both. It'll help, it'll help our show and, and Best Buddies. They will all, they will all tune in to watch themselves on TV when it airs. Very good to hear. So, how can our viewers either participate or help out the, the friendship walk, John? Um, how they can participate is go to bestbuddiescalifornia.org, that slash sf walk, 
Another one is they can help donate, help raise money for Best Buddies, which is Best Buddies is a non-profit organization that was formed by Anthony Kennedy Shriver, and we're gonna get some local celebrities at the walk, like Liam Maclin, Katie Green's gonna be there, and maybe Kate Scott, and also Supervisor Eric Marr will be there. Excellent, excellent. Could you repeat uh, the web address for our viewers again, please? Yes, I can. BestBuddiesCalifornia.org slash backslash SF Walk. Thank you. Any additional questions you'd like to ask uh, John Will? Uh, yes. Um, how long have you been in Best Buddies? Well, I've been in Best Buddies since 2002. And we're going on strong, Will. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. I'm Stacey Kennedy, and as an added, um, what I'd like to add to today is I'd like to interview Keith about executive recruiting. Can you tell a, us a little bit about that? Yes. I've been uh, working in recruiting for well over 20 years, and I have looked for a wide variety of people, ranging from very entry-level folks to very experienced uh, people. It's mainly been in technical areas, but not exclusively so. It's been very challenging and very rewarding in a lot of ways. Okay. Well, how long has this been going on? Well, the way I've been doing recruiting now is called contract recruiting, which is a, a specialized form. Uh, I look for folks sort of on an hourly basis, like uh, the way an attorney would or a CPA, uh, and I hire all the folks that they need, usually for about you know, three or more months, and then I work my way out of a job and I do it again. Wow, that's, I absolutely, that's wonderful, Keith. I, I think that's very helpful towards those on the spectrum. Well, thank you. You are um, welcome. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm actually on the spectrum. I think I am. I'd mm -hmm. love to be diagnosed, mm -hmm. but I don't have the, uh, what I've heard last time, three to $5,000 uh, out of pocket right. to be paid as an adult. But I think I've, over the years, uh, faced problems that are consistent with somebody over right. the uh, spectrum. And I think the way my particular employment works, which is work for people for a number of months, um, has helped help me deal with my particular mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. In addition, you don't have to represent an organization. If you are on the spectrum, if you are a member of a family of someone who's on the spectrum or a friend, or if you're a professional who deals with our community and you have something interesting to say or to show us, we would like to have you on camera as well. And you don't even have to be on camera. If you have something you've produced, send it on in. Because this is not our program, this is your program. We're doing it for you. So, for this week's program of Ascend uh, Life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next week.